Hello, I'm Casey Dinges, Senior Managing Director for the American Society of Civil Engineers. Thanks for joining us today for a discussion on influencing without the positional power. My guest today is Carol Martsoff, Vice President and Director of Training at Urban Engineers. Welcome, Carol. Thanks for having me, Casey. In today's team-oriented business environment, the ability to influence others without relying on positional authority is important for a successful career. First, what is positional authority and what does it mean to influence without it? Well, positional authority uh, regards the hierarchy of a company. So if you have a role that's higher or lower than someone else, then that would be the positional authority. So as your president, then a vice president would be under that authority. And if you're, say, a project engineer, then you would not have the positional authority to, say, a project manager. So it's all about the hierarchy within a company. So what strategies or techniques are needed to be influential without the positional power, especially for young engineers? Well, what's interesting is that the studies on influence are all based off of uh, scientific evidence. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I have this acronym that I use called K-CUP, like the Keurig mm -hmm. cup. And so K stands for knowledge. So get to know as much as you can about the person or the group that you're trying to influence. You really want to get to know as much as you can about the people or the person that you're trying to influence. And it's really important, though, that you're sincere. Because if you're not sincere, you can't really influence anybody. So just, just like Dale Carnegie's book, uh, How to Win Friends and Influence People, right. you really have to be sincere, though. So next is C, yeah. which means commitment and consistency. So whatever you're asking of someone, you want to tie it to something that is consistent with their past behavior. So I'll give you an example. So I wanted my company to support the Region 2 assembly. And I knew my company already supported the Philadelphia section. So I thought, well, it's not going to be much of a jump to ask them to support the Region 2 assembly. So that's an example of commitment and consistency. It was consistent with an urban engineer's behavior, quote unquote behavior, mm -hmm. to support ASCE on the section level, so I thought it wouldn't take right. much to bounce it up to a regional level, and they did approve it. And then you means understanding. Understand the situation from the other person or the other group's point of view. An example of that would be I had to request a budget for a program that I wanted for my job. And this group that I had to present to was very in tune with making money for the company and the bottom line. Sure. So, so instead of saying, I want this program to maybe be more efficient, mm -hmm. I said, I want this program because it will enable me to make more money. And will it enable me to make more money? Yes, that was sincere. Mm -hmm. But I focused on that when I made my presentation. And I, I did get approval for the funds. And P, mm -hmm. and P is for priming. And priming is very interesting because priming means setting the stage right before your ask to set a positive stage. For example, if you're going to a job interview, maybe schedule it like right after lunch or sometime in the morning because you don't want to be last because then you're probably tired, your interviewer is tired. Right after lunch is when people have had a break, they've had time to rejuvenate, and you'll probably get a better result. Never view a K-cup the same way. <laughs> I hope you remember yeah. this from that. <laughs> How can these skills help engineers successfully transition into a manager role? Yes. Um, mostly being a really good project manager means that you have to really be good with people. Right. And you have to be good at processes and managing tasks, but ultimately it's people that carry them out. So using these uh, tactics will help you in understanding people. How can these strategies help teams and work environments succeed? Well, actually, I'm glad you asked that, Casey, because this is one of the reasons why I really studied this topic as thoroughly as I did. Um, when you have a positive work environment, there's a lot of trust. And without trust, you can't have influence. So if you're working with someone that you're really getting to know in a genuine fashion, and you care about the things that they care about, you see things from their perspective, it can only create a positive work environment. So even if someone does have positional power, it's probably best not to use it because it creates a more positive work atmosphere if you don't use it. Are work environments kind of getting this about the, this issue of positional power? Is it still a hang up in general or are things moving a little bit in the right direction? I still see a lot of companies 
using the positional power and employees of certain companies using their positional power. And I still think we have a ways to go. I think it's better than in the past. I think companies were more hierarchical in the past and those lines are getting a little bit blurry now, mm -hmm. which I think is good, but there's a ways to go. Mm -hmm. Good, well that's encouraging. Yeah, thanks. So it sounds like the really successful leaders in this day and age are the ones that are look at this, are aware of this issue of positional authority. Yes, um, a real leader, a true leader, does not use positional power too frequently with his or her staff. Um, it's important to have an atmosphere of trust, and trust enables you to have a really wonderful work environment. If you're constantly using your positional power to order people around, order them to do certain things, it doesn't empower the people that report to you, and that's the opposite of what you have in a, in a good working environment. When is it appropriate to use positional authority? There are some instances where you should use it, and most importantly, in a time of an emergency, where you need to know who you need to listen to and what you need to do. Fortunately, there aren't that many times in an emergency, but in normal day-to-day -day business, you should use the other methods of influence. So you have the positional authority, but you if there's an error, you own up to the downside. Exactly. But if things go great, you try to spread the glory to your team. Exactly. And also, it's whether you what you do publicly. Mm -hmm. Publicly, when everything goes well, you want right. to show that, oh, your team did a great job. Right. But if something doesn't go right, you want to protect your team and ultimately say, you know, that was my fault. I'm project manager, and that was my fault. Carol, thank you for joining me today for this enlightening discussion on how to influence without positional power. Thanks for having me, Casey. For more information on ASCE's Interchange program, visit ASCE.org slash interchange. Thanks for tuning in today, and we'll see you next time on the ASCE Interchange. Mm -hmm.